All right, so let's build them. So we, N and M, we've got a couple of um, ways to do this. And I know this is a reminder of sorts, but um, we'll connect it to contagion at the end, which is very important. Uh, and then, as I said, it's a nice setup. Okay, so, uh, and you're welcome to like gesticulate for questions, and I'll try to answer them. Um, we'll find a previous version of me that knows what was going on. Okay. That's true, my lectures one day could be just like, I'll just Google search for, well, someone else's videos, let's be honest. All right, so, um, so we're going to have uh, probabilistic methods. So the first one will be, and this is a nice thing uh, theoretically, where we will just, usually theoretically, we will just say, okay, we're going to have some probability P, and we'll um, connect, we'll go to every pair, and then just sort of flip this coin that's P1 minus P. Um, we could have our M links, and then we have our nodes laid out, and then we choose pairs at random, and then we put them down, and we have to choose, um, uh, right, so they've got these empty spaces, we choose uh, without replacement, right, so we have to, you know, once it's filled in, we can't add another one there. Uh, if it's a pretty sparse one, then that's not too bad. You know, you can just sort of add edges, and if you find one's already been added, you just sort of um, go back and do it again. So this is good for theoretical stuff, and that's the story here, right? So for how to do this one. So we're going to randomly choose a pair of nodes, I and J, put an edge down, and then we just keep going until we've allocated all of them. Uh, this is great if, if there are small numbers. Um, <coughs> for large N, these are going to end up being basically the same. Of course, if, um, if, if there's already an edge, as I said, if there's already an edge between them, you just start again. You just forget, forget that effort, right? And that'll be fine if it's sparse. Cool? OK. And of course, now we, it took a long time, to be honest, but things like NetworkX and GraphTool have these things built in. Um, it's kind of amazing, actually, how long all that took. I mean, I wrote all my little versions in C uh, ages ago and sort of made them work with MATLAB. And that was. It was good, but you know, none of these things. I guess GitHub really didn't exist. You know, people weren't sharing things that well or as easily as they can now. I mean, you could put stuff up, but we didn't really get packages for a while that people could play with. Anyway, so that's good. Uh, but they are fun problems to sort of. They're good coding problems. You know, they are good things to think about. All right. So we're going to end up actually with uh, a probabilistic. Uh, uh, number of uh, edges in that first case because we're, you know, adding things probabilistically. And so there are n choose two possible links, and we're going to get this fraction p of them realized. And this is, of course, this n choose two is a half n, n minus one, so that's what we have there. Uh, <coughs> so, very simple thing, the expected average degree, so we'll need this little connection uh, these, these pieces here are quite important. So this is the average degree, right? We always use K. That's become that's pretty standard in, in at least the complex networks literature. There's no great reason for it, but average degree K uh, will be two times the expected number of edges divided by N. So the two is here because uh, every, let's randomly choose something that doesn't work. Oh. Right, this is, just to remind you, this is boop, boop, yeah. Right, so an edge, uh, we're going to break into two pieces. So in terms of degree, right, this has got a number of other friends, right? Each one of these counts as two, right? So we get two um, uh, edges, <coughs> incident edges you know, per edge, right? Right? That's fine. Okay. <coughs> so we have to count, if we're going to find the average number of friends a node has, we have to double the number of edges and divide by the total number of nodes. Okay? Right? Just the two. And then there's, if we've got our probabilistic method, right, we're just going to stick that result in there. We have two over n. This is not a complicated thing. The twos cancel. The n's cancel. Uh, and we get the right thing. So P times M minus 1. So from a node's point of view, um, 
or if you think of it from a node-centric point of view, it's always best to think of network stuff from edge point of view once we get in, in, in this kind of world we're in now, I suppose. Uh, so you've got a node. It has um, n minus 1 other friends, potentially. And so we're going to randomly attempt to connect them. And they've, we've got probably p. Right? So this is the expected number of uh, other friends that a node will have. So we get to it in two ways. We can argue for it directly, right? So, so p times n minus 1. Um, what well it should be, of course. And so often we're going to say we need this specified average degree. You know, we want everyone to have, on average, 4.5 friends. And so if that's the case, then we're going to keep this fixed. And we think about, and we'll often think about networks as n becomes large. We want to sort of consider that kind of um, family of networks. Then uh, p has to decrease, right? So our probability of connection has to go down. And in fact, we'll go to zero, right? If we want to end up with a finite number of friends, average number of friends. Okay, so that's a little, just a little uh, important detail, and it's why you end up with ultimately Poisson degree distributions instead of Gaussian ones. It can't be Gaussian because it just doesn't make any sense anyway, but you sort of, right, because of negative things, but you, you might think it m might be pretty much more like a normal, but it's actually Poisson, and that's the part of it. 